In this tutorial, we're going to look how to use it um, custom paint shaders for distribution specific materials. In our case, it will be grass and rock. So right here is the default center from the turgeon. And all that we have this in our terrain workflow, it is simple shader, which provide this flat area. We have our fractal terrain, fractal warp shaders and compute terrain around which connect to base color and connect to our planet. So you can see it's have a workflow. In previous tutorials, when we need to change shape or create, for example, a rock shader, we kind of try to put it inside this flow of the computer or whatever, so we can affect on a shape of our planet. With the distribution of materials, we actually don't need to do this. It will reside on a top, similar like any other object. So to do this first, let's create our paint shader. And actually, I'm going to reposition it a bit so we can see in this area. And to do this, we're going to right click anywhere in our node viewer. We'll go to shader, color shader, and we'll go select painted. Also, it can reside anywhere, but for the organization purposes, I'm just putting inside the shader area. And now I'm going to double time click open to access properties for our paint shader so we can modify to start painting we just need to go on top navigation bar right left click on our brush select start painting and from menu we can select a different paint shader currently we have it only one we just created it's paint shader 01 so I'll click on this and select notice how we change now we have an orange circle which represents size of our brush and center, which is select polygons that are in the middle of selection. So I don't need to select create this big one. For this reason, I have it open my paint shader properties. I'm going right here, brush and size and reduce down to maybe about 50, 40, some around, around that area. This is using absolute brush size. So we're going around here. You also can use it view relative. So when you zoom in, it will change based on the view. But for again, our tutorial will just use it absolute brush. This point I can start paint, but before I do this, I want also increase flow on our paint on our brush. I want to increase up so we'll have a little bit higher density. Okay, one tip before you start um, paint notice if I just start once and drag, I cannot see my paint at all. Just make one dot release till paint is appear. And from this point, if I start paint, actually I can see it where it's going. I'm sure this is probably small um, adjustments that will hopefully will be fixed and uh, next release of the charging. So right here, I'm just having a little bit paint, doesn't matter how you're going. Okay, so we'll go right there, select there, paint. So overall, you can paint going on a high up mountains you know you can paint right there maybe it's up to your artistic view how you want to create it just keep it in mind that paint shader is almost like a projection on the terrain and it does not um a law it does not follow the procedural terrain this is kind of one of the biggest minus that if you have a procedural terrain and you paint distribution based on this terrain you're going after and change something in a function terrain that will change terrain shape. It's one change shape of your paint shader because it was painting directly as absolute and projection. So that way you need to go back and clear or erase some elements and repaint. Again, the same things. It is very powerful because it allowed you to have a very artistic flexibility. Where do you want to put it? So if you have it, your workflow, be sure you're using this paint shader more closer to the end after your terrain shape is already locked and you're done with the overall it, with the shape. So okay, we're done painting. Next, what we want to do is assign some um, elements to distribute it there. So let's go ahead, close our properties. We don't need any more. Um, notice it's still visible kind of because we're still in the paint mode so to disable we need again left click on our paint brush on top and select stop painting it's kind of disappeared at this point we know overall location 
but that is okay because we will uh, use it in a second again if any time you need it you can enable and just preview all of the stuff okay so next we want to actually right click and go to create population in this case we'll just go select um, grass clump we'll go select notice it's creating object for us again location not necessary but for the organization purpose i put it in an object area and if we open this grass at this time if we populate it will populate in this select area so instead what i want to do i want to populate only in the area where i paint I'm taking output from our paint shader and connect to density our shader. Notice it is a green uh, light, it is in colors. So if you overall, just let me remind that inside the Terragen we have a few types, three main types. It is color, scholar number, and a vector. It can be two or three vectors. But overall we have a three main types that we're working with. Okay, as we use painter, it's used color so it you notice it is um, assigned to this with a color um, notice if we're using paint shader same way you can actually create a different map like in photoshop load it as an image and connect to the density as well as an image okay but in our case we're using paint shader so now we'll open grass and right here in grass let's go set spacing to five five okay we can enable preview color and let's click populate now notice it does not populate anything because location for this area where the grass should populate it out of location of our paint shader which is located on the top where we paint so now we actually needed to move our paint shader or match locations so for this one so we'll go inside right click for now let's select our grass and i'm just going to move this around this area Currently, I can tell the area where the grass it is, it's smaller. So if I click populate, you can see some areas getting cut off, like on the bottom here and side. So it's meaning we need to um, increase a little bit size for area A and B. So we can go stretch a little bit higher this way. More. Don't worry if it's a little bit too big because we are one populate everywhere. We just will populate only in an area where we're painting. So we can actually can create even a larger size for this. Okay, and let's move up and click populate again. So right here we have our population in an area you can see where we created. So now next let's go to disable preview color and here is our grass. And this way I want to take my camera right now and maybe you know just bring a little bit closer. Right there let's copy our camera so we can preview with our grass populated let's add also rocks to this so we can do the same go select the create population we'll go select the rocks same as object we'll just for their purpose we'll put it in the same area and we'll connect our shader let's go next open our rocks and you notice our rocks again located on different areas so i'll just lock this open grass and just to be sure i want to put it on right place i'm copying coordinates from the grass and paste in the rock so i know it will be like in the same area because i want to cover it there and we'll just go select this approximately same size for the hour rocks okay at this point if i go click and populate now you can see our rocks populated inside because if you want it, we can always invert. In this case, the rocks will populate it not in a grass area. Notice sometimes they can overlap, and this is with your distribution that we can play a little bit more. But for the purpose of the tutorials, I'm just going to populate them inside. Okay, as we're populating those rocks, um, we can also play around with our density. So we can, for example, pop up a bit higher density. We're going to go to the scale. And also says um, make them a little bit smaller size of the rocks. Let's 
an area. Let's go, you know, just zoom a little bit closer. So we kind of preview this area. Let's disable preview color, closed. Okay, I think it's right here, okay. Also, let me just switch to the smooth shader so I can see my grass and other things. Sometimes maybe on a grass again, on the preview, we want to maybe increase density of the grass a little bit more. The problem is you'll notice how many instances already created and it will be much worse if we don't use it special paint areas because right now we're kind of in paint areas we um, don't overuse that much maybe this is still a little bit too much so reduce slightly okay set camera let's go to render our view Okay, and you can see right here we have our rocks population, our grass population. Again, this is as a test preview for you, so you can overall see um, how the population is working with the paint shaders. And again, remember this is paint shaders. It, if we change the shape of the terrain, for example, if we're going to take um, and reduce size of this maybe to hungry it just so we can see notice our paint shaders is also will be going on top of this so we're going right here we'll go click populate paint shaders and this is will go with the shapes of the mountain that we modify so it will um, keep it the original paint shapes but it won't take influence so how I say this is one of the biggest withdraw so if i want to do this i will actually need to go after and repaint but overall it's work very nice it's give, provide you good tools for customization and save a lot of things on limited area where you want distributed thank you for watching this tutorial and be sure to check us in a www.geekatplay.com for more intelligent tutorials